Hi everyone, thank you for joining us for the presentation of RoboCheck, a joint project between roboticists and behavioral neuroscientists done at Queen Mary University of London. In this project, we developed a prototype of a chicken robot that can interact with newly hatched chicks. My name is Zuzanna Swanina, and I'm one of the PhD students who worked on this project. Together with Shu, Augusto, and Joshua, we will tell you about what we did, why we did it, and what are the next steps in this project. The research question we wanted to address in this project was what features of robots promote social interactions between chicks and robots. To begin with, I'd like to give you some background on why we wanted to build a chicken robot in the first place and why our research question is so relevant. The main reasons related to the limitations in the study of social interactions. Because the study of natural social behavior of animals involves multiple interaction partners, you cannot control the interaction, you cannot repeat the same interaction across the animals or in the same subject, you can't separate the behavior from the context in which it appears, and you can't isolate individual components of the behavior to assess the individual impact on the overall interaction. All of this limits uh, the degree of control over experimental conditions. Studying social interactions in chickens might be helpful in addressing those limitations, and that is due to a very characteristic type of social attachment that occurs in chickens, namely imprinting. Shu will now tell you more about imprinting and why it can be helpful for us. It's very important for young chicks to be able to recognize and follow their mother soon after hatching. So they can keep warm, they can be kept safe from predators, and they can learn where to find food and water. Here you can see a typical group of a mother hen and her chicks, where the chicks always try to stay close to their mother. This is achieved through the biological phenomenon of filler imprinting, which is a rapid learning process in the early stage of life, and it takes place through mixed exposure, with no reinforcements needed. Filler imprinting allows chicks to form social attachments with the familiar object, after which they would actively try to stay close to it, and they would become very anxious if they couldn't. Young chicks can not only imprint on naturally state stimuli, such as adult hens and humans, but also on artificial stimuli, such as colored lights, simple objects such as the red cylinder, or even virtual computer-generated objects presented to them on a monitor. Checks also show spontaneous preferences or predispositions, which may attract them towards certain stimuli and lead to more effective imprinting. For example, studies have found them to show a predisposition for the color red, for face-like configurations, and for accelerated and biological motions. With chicks being so tolerant in selecting their interaction partners, researchers have been able to use both passive and active replicas in studies, and have shown that chicks display social behaviors towards those replicas. However, so far none of the replicas was equally successful in eliciting attachment as real chickens. By combining these three areas of previous research that I have just mentioned, that is social interactions in printing and the use of artificial stimuli in studies of social behavior, we arrive at the current study in which we try to build a fully interactive robot that would let us identify the features that are most effective in promoting social interactions with chicks. In order to make the robot attractive to chicks, our design was informed by previous research on chick preferences for imprinting objects. For this reason, the body of our robot, which you can see here, was red, it was similar in size to a chick, it had flashing lights to attract attention, and it produced sounds. In order to make the robot interactive, we needed it to detect interactions from chicks and also respond to them. For this purpose, we installed two types of sensors and two types of actuators in the robot's hardware. Augusto will now tell you about them. The robotic system contains all of its electronic hardware inside its body. All of the electronic components used by Robochick are connected to the main central processing unit. An Adafruit board works as the brain of this system. This board use is similar to most commercial development boards. But this one has a Wi-Fi connectivity, which allows it to connect to the internet and communicate with our software remotely. The components connected to this central unit are an ultrasound proximity sensor, which measures distance from the robot chick to the chick. Two red LEDs that can be turned on and off by the central processing unit. A piezoelectric contact sensor, connected to the robot chick external walls. It can measure when the chick touches the robot, either by touching it directly or pecking, and can measure duration as well as the intensity of the interaction. And finally, an audio playback system which plays a sound out loud for the chick to hear. It has an MP3 player, 
which has a series of pre-recorded chick sounds. These sounds are then amplified by an amplifier and played out loud by the speaker. These sounds can be triggered by the CPU at any desired moment. To enable testing in different experimental conditions, we wrote software that allowed us to adjust settings of the robot depending on what we wanted to test. Joshua will now tell you more about it. RoboChick's operating system is based on a HTTP web server, which maintains the robot settings, controls the output transducers, and serves the user interface to any device with a web browser. The software system is based around the idea of an experiment. That is to say that the user defines the robot's output and interaction behavior for a set time period, representing the duration of a controlled encounter with a chick or chicks. The tactile sensor is monitored for the duration of the experiment to identify physical interactions with the chick, regardless of whether or not the robot is supposed to respond to being touched. The robot keeps an ongoing log of all physical interactions and output stimuli throughout the experiment. There are also controls for the auditory and vibratory effects to be produced manually, both during and outside of a defined experiment. While testing this initial design, we wanted to find out whether the sensors work as intended, whether the chicks want to interact with the robots at all, and to see whether the lights and the sounds make the robot more attractive or not. To address these questions, we tested seven chicks in a two-choice experiment. We placed them in an arena with two identical robots, where one would display the tested feature, either the flashing light or the vocalization, and the other one wouldn't. The chicks could explore the arena for an hour while we observed and recorded their behavior. In order to quantify preferences, we tracked the chicks' movements and looked at the time spent in the proximity of each of the robots, as well as analyzed the data recorded from the sensors of the robots to calculate the time of active interaction with each of the robots. In the experiment, we have observed several types of social behaviors. We observed four different types of physical contacts made by the chicks, which differed in their duration and intensity. Additionally, the chicks vocalized a lot while exploring the robot. Based on that, we'd like to make the future version of the robot capable of detecting and responding to vocalizations. Additionally, we'd like to optimize the way the data is saved so that it accounts better for different types of interactions that differ in intensity and duration. Looking at the time spent in the proximity of each of the robots, there seemed to be no difference in preference for the active or the passive robots. However, more subjects will be needed in order to run appropriate statistical analysis. This does not mean that the robots are entirely unattractive to the checks, as they still interacted with both. Rather, it indicates that the tested features do not crucially affect the attractiveness of the robot. For this reason, we suggest that these features are either intensified in future versions of the robot or that new features are added. Additionally, we suggest that the study is shortened to 30 minutes per check, as it seems that it is possible to establish whether a check forms a preference or not during the first 30 minutes. Lastly, we looked at the time of active interactions with each of the robots in experiment 1. We found that the time check spent on active interactions with the active robot was higher than that spent with the passive robot. Unfortunately, we could not analyze the data from the second experiment due to data loss resulting from overfilling the memory of the robot. Based on that, we suggest to validate the reliability of sensors by comparing their performance with that of a human observer. Additionally, a more efficient way of saving data needs to be implemented in the future design. This concludes the pilot study of RoboCheck, in which we have shown that it is an appropriate prototype for testing features promoting social interactions in checks, as well as proposed a protocol for doing such experiments. One of the great advantages of RoboCheck is that it's easy and cheap to assemble which makes it possible to use across various laboratories, even those with little experience in robotics. All information needed to assemble RoboCheck is available online, together with software we have used. Thank you very much for your attention.